All right, woo! I'm cracking like it. Hi, you guys. This is Rachel here, the Modern Shaman. Thanks for being with me for another YouTube Q&A video this week. If you're new to the channel, I always invite you to go to my website, which is themodernshaman.net, to just look at the resources that are available for you guys. If you have never checked out my online teaching modules, go look there, even if you have been with me for years and years and years on this YouTube channel. There's so many resources and they vary in prices because the masterclass teaching curriculum, it is a cumulative curriculum, but I have made it available module by module. So it's so awesome to go and kind of look at each of the modules and to see what is calling to you, what intuitively hits you and is like, oh yeah, I wanna develop that skill or I wanna know more about that. And the masterclass curriculum is different from this, from me um, just, talking and kind of lecturing. There's a lecture component, but the lecture is more uh, hands-on. So there's an activity, there's a guided meditation, there are clearing ceremonies, there are um, activation ceremonies, there are practice activities with a PDF handout where you kind of go through guided questions and look at, it's just like way more in depth. And I would love for you to utilize that because it is truly my heart. This is kind of a small glimpse of it when I'm on here answering your questions. But if you are really sincere about wanting to go further in learning your own skills and your own capabilities, because y'all know, if you've known me at all, that I believe that everyone, everyone is capable of honing their extrasensory perception and awareness of what's beyond. This is truly like learning a language that we have been living in and breathing in our entire life. It's our intuitive field. And we are spirit before we are form. That is our native sense of communication, our organic way of understanding things around us from um, beyond just the body. So. I would love for you to check out the classes, see what really connects with you and um, let me help and instruct and motivate and encourage you if you feel led. Also, if you're not interested in the master classes, but you just would like to work with me as a seer, a reader, a shamanic healer, clearer, uh, ceremony guide, all of that's also available on the website where you can um, purchase a one-on-one -on -one session with me. So that's the spiel I give at the beginning every time I do these videos because I hope it's kind of a funnel there to where y'all will follow up with me. Even though I know many of you that tune in here are actually already working practitioners and um, kind of fellow contenders in this field. I shouldn't say contender. That sounds like we're fighting. <laughs> a fellow friend in this field where we're working harmoniously together, but um, if that's you, then more power to you. And I'm grateful that you're here as well, just to share in the energy that we build through this community. Share these videos with people that you feel like would benefit from them if they're a blessing to you and just keep this community growing. All right, let's get on with the question for today. So this one was sent in from a client of mine and he said, Rachel, can you talk about what the spiritual benefits are of three things? Imagination, vibration, and playfulness. This is fun. This is a fun one. Even the question is fun, right? <laughs> okay, so yeah, let's do it. Um, they're all very similar. But distinctive. And I'm going to kind of go through my own spiritual definition of your terms that you mentioned. And then they all definitely have relevance. Everything that is here and present in our experience has relevance, but you can use them in different ways that are, um, you know, I guess more important to you. So the first one I'll talk about is imagination. And imagination is interesting because typically if you are clairvoyant or a visual learner or just a um, person who likes visuals, who likes to see things when people are speaking about them or watch the movies or um, have PowerPoint presentations that kind of visually walk you through diagrams or graphs, then your imagination or your third eye, which it's also called, 
um, the visual internal area of the mind is a powerful place for spiritual growth. That everyone has this ability, even if you don't feel like it is your most dominant psychic sense or it is your most dominant way of learning, everyone has the ability to activate, to turn on, to strengthen their imagination or your, their third eye, all right? Sometimes the third eye is talked about in terms of premonition or past life viewing, kind of moving it in ver various timelines or parallel dimensions, but it is the same activity in the mind imagination. And I used to get this question all the time when I was touring and I would give uh, lectures and seminars and then I would open up to a Q&A at the end. I mean, all the time people would ask, what is the difference between my clairvoyance and my imagination? And there's honestly not much difference. That is the way that we all start out to strengthen our clairvoyant muscle. This is why visual meditations, where people walk you through a visual experience when you're meditating, this is the use of the imagination to strengthen the internal visual abilities that is our uh, psychic clairvoyance. Clairvoyance has the ability to tune into it on demand and to be disassociated with outcomes so that you are not a contributing um, influencer. So you are the observer that can view different parallel uh, experiences or probabilities, past, forward, what have you. So it's a little more control of this ability and navigational flow of it. But the visual part of it, how it's coming up in the mind, is the same use as our imaginative abilities. So they don't contradict one another. They strengthen one another. And for spiritual benefits of the imagination, I would number one say that it allows you to strengthen your third eye and the details that you get within that. Now, when I teach um, clairvoyance, the technique is very similar to developing and strengthening your imagination. We go into the way that we describe something and when we start readings also, and when I'm teaching people how to do uh, psychic readings, we always start with getting as much as we can through the imaginary um, perspective, right? Holographic or visual perspective without using our the um, visual spectrum of our actual eyes and our optical sensations, right? But the internal, if our eyes are closed, that moves into the imaginary realm and we get as specific as we can. So we practice this skill of imagination and this is what I would um, recommend for you to get as specific as you can. And I call this zooming in and zooming out as if I have a telescopic lens in my third eye and I'm able to zoom in tight and when I zoom in, I can zoom in as detailed as I want. There is nothing holding me back because I am beyond form in this space. And so when I use my psychic senses, I can go to the microscopic level to look at disease, to look at genes and DNA. Um, I can go beyond. I can go to any timeline that I set as appropriate for myself. I can... Uh, go forward and backward with those timelines, I can pan out and go into planetary observation and look at things beyond just this earth, things beyond um, even the solar system and what have you. I can look at the dynamics of how things interrelate and the string theory that connects all of things and look specifically at just connections and energetic connections, just the relational dynamic of things, which oftentimes is helpful for people also. So I would play with the specifications of your imagination. And you can do this in a very practical way by getting a piece of paper, writing down kind of the, um, the structure or the format you want to create for yourself to practice strengthening your imagination and getting more precise with your vision. 
This is helpful, like I said, in reading. This is also helpful in manifestation. This is also helpful in understanding the non-physical world. When you feel sensations or visuals coming to you and information um, from beyond, um, and you are wanting to be able to kind of perceive it with more clarity or understand what it is that you're getting, this strengthens the precision, having navigational control. So you would sit down, you would write down on a piece of paper, the timeline in which you want to visit. So if it's, you know, one week from now, and I suggest you just put it in there like a date, like literally when, um, if y'all, <laughs> like right now I'm thinking of Back to the Future, if y'all have ever seen that movie or that series of movies where you put in the actual date, um, and he puts it in the car and, and it brings him to that date. You would want to write that down on the piece of paper if there are specific times within that date. Say you have a court date and you know it's going to be at 8 you know, uh, a.m. in the morning or something's going to happen at a particular time. You specify that time. And give yourself a very specific, precise, again, this is trying to strengthen the um, precision of your imagination and give guidance to where and when you want to go. Then you can put in the dynamics of the perspective in which you would like, right? Are you watching it from third party omniscient to where you're kind of viewing like as if it's a movie, what's happening? Are you first person in body? Are you present for that experience? Are you looking at something in your life that's in the future? Or are you looking from the perspective of uh, first person, another experience, maybe it was you as a child or things like this. And then you can do the dynamics of which you, what you want to see there. I want to see how this situation plays out. Okay, you write it all down on the paper before you close your eyes and um, kind of tune into that date, that perspective, and that situation. Those three things really help move you in and out of the precision and the ability to navigate where you're going. And you can do that forward, backward. You can do it into past lifetimes. Um, the skill can be used over and over and over and you get better and better at it the more that uh, you practice, just like anything. It is an internal muscle. And so you can definitely strengthen it that way. Let's look at vibration, okay? Your next term. So vibration, right, is the oscillation of energy or the oscillation of light waves, right? And typically it's talked about in terms of frequency because that's the measurement of those oscillations, right? The up and down and the, the difference in those from the peak to the trough. And what, like in layman's terms, when people say, oh, they have a good energy or they have a happy energy, these are typically higher oscillations in frequency where the vibration starts going faster. And typically this is higher and higher in the light spectrum as well. We get to where these are um, light waves that we can't see, right? They're beyond our visual spectrum of light, but we can feel them especially those that are clairsentient. They can really learn precision with vibration. And this is the skill that I teach in learning navigational flow and precision with your clairsentience, okay? Honing that vibration of being able to move into a room and most people can read it right away because this is a very intuitive and organic and basic way of reading vibration or telling the frequency within those oscillations of the room, right? We can tell where there are density or heaviness to where the vibrations are slower. The more you move into form, so someone who's very focused on the 3D, on material uh, things, and they have a very dense, it's a denser vibration because the more um, the light wave, or it can be sound, it can be different waves, but the more the energy oscillation solidifies, it goes slower and slower. And so when we feel those kind of heavy vibes or dense vibes or stagnant vibes of energy, this is typically more material form. They feel slower. It doesn't mean negative, right? You can hold a rock and it has a slow, uh, depending on the rock, I'm saying that there's some crystals that oscillate faster, of course, but typically if you held rock or dirt or something like this, it may have a very dense form to it. Uh, and a very dense vibe to it, very heavy. And 
sometimes we need that grounded energy. Remember, this is no sense of judgment. It's just a reading of the vibration. So a way to strengthen your kind of ability within this realm is to play with um, what I like to call, like, <laughs> I talk about it in terms of a radio, in terms of changing the radio dial, okay? So I would encourage you to set the dial at a particular frequency that you want to be able to navigate. This is helpful for those that feel bombarded by a vibration and frequencies um, and don't feel like they have any navigational control of it. So you would set the intention or you can sit down and write it on a paper. Paper has power, you all. So in my practices when I teach, it is grounded, it is from trees. And there is an aspect of it that it brings the non-material into material form. It puts it into form. So it really moves something that may just be in our mind of like, I want to do this. I want to think about this. I want to grow in this spiritual way. It moves it into manifested physical form before you do the practice. So it's a very strong activator for us to write things down and then move it into the practice of it. So there's conscientious thought why I tell you to write it down first. When you write this down, I would focus on something, maybe you are bombarded um, when you walk into, I don't know, your, your mother's house or a certain area in your house, uh, an office building, whatever it may be. I would start there and say that I want to be able to have vibrational control to mute or to turn down the frequency when it feels like it's too fast, when I have a, a rapid heart rate, when it feels like it's overwhelming me or emotionally um, overpowering me. And then the practice would be to sit, to activate that feeling. So either take yourself kind of like an exposure therapy into that area and then to practice moving as if you had a frequency dial or a radio control and you were able to just turn that knob from high volume to low volume, from high frequency to low, and then feel very viscerally, like feel the difference within your heart rate, within your breathing pattern, within your body of those changes. And then go the other way. Practice moving very intentionally. And because I'm clairvoyant, I always like to see the visual of it. Like I wanna see the knob and I wanna turn it this way or that way. Or I wanna see the dial and I wanna turn it this way or that way. So I would encourage you, if you're also clairvoyant, playing with your imagination to do the same thing. And strengthen and be able to mute. This is a higher level practice also, to be able to stop it on a dime to where all of the energy just goes <laughs> It's also called the vacuum, to be able to vacuum it and hold it in a sense of psychic space or a contextualized space to where all the energy is held there in a pocket or a bubble. If you are visual and playing with the imagination, you can put it almost like in a comic bubble in a literal space where it has spatial awareness and everything goes into that bubble and then you turn it back on and you turn off the mute and it comes back in and you can feel the energy there. That's a great practice, precision activity for clairsentience for those uh, learning to strengthen and uh, navigate the flow of vibration to have control of that. This is also really powerful if you have um, social anxiety or things like this when you go into groupings or, or in, a, in a certain situation um, socially to where you feel like you have energetic navigational control or power over the way that the energy is coming into you. I'm not talking about pushing it on others. I'm talking about the way you receive it and have control over the navigation of that. Okay, and then the last one you asked about, playfulness. I love that one. You know what? This is so powerful for what people call psychic or spiritual warfare. It's funny because when we think of warfare in the 3D or in this material realm and our regular waking world, it's very physical and it's and it, it's never effective because it's like battle. We're putting two energies that are the same together, right? Anger, frustration are like me against you or I feel like I'm right, you feel like you're right, and so we're going to this. But it's the same energy, right? So nothing is ever really created out, out of it other than friction frictional energy so this is it's just pointless it like makes no energetic sense however 
when we work in the spiritual realms, and I'll give you an example. If ever you have, I figured this out as a kid, actually, because I used to be very fearful of um, like haunted houses and scary movies. And I figured it out when I was really young that if I went into those haunted houses and if I laughed at the people in the masks, if I told a joke, if I played funny, even if I was scared on the inside, if I initiated that energy of playfulness in an opposition to an energy of fear or hate or anger, if I laughed at it, if I softened it, not like ha ha ha, not in it in that way, in a genuinely playful way, this energy has like a bubble. It's like air pockets that come up. If you're sensitive, you can feel literally that the way that the energy is um, dimensionally or spatially created. And playfulness has like a spherical energy to it, like a bubble that literally like effervescence will come up out of the, oftentimes the heart chakra and out through the throat. So when it's coming up, like this and you are genuinely bringing air you are lightening the density of that heavy hate aggravation fear whatever it may be and putting air and those air pockets into that density and so it will literally energetically break up like putting air pockets into dirt right or something that's solid it will break up the energy of density or the heaviness of that density and um, open it energetically. So there is a part of this energetic or psychic warfare that is fought by playfulness, lightheartedness. Love is not weak when it comes to the higher dimensional realms. It is not passive. It is very active and conscientious and intelligent with the way that it uses playfulness. All right. And those higher and higher in this, these realms know this. This is why oftentimes um, we see highly intelligent kind of darker entities play on children or prey on those that are innocent and pure. There is a lightness that combats the darkness with that purity and joyful and playfulness. So when you are psychically and um, spiritually intelligent with the way that you use this, and this is what I would tell you to develop precision with your playfulness, that you use it in a way that's conscientious around areas that create fear in your life or past trauma to where you can break up the energy of heaviness, um, oftentimes um, like traumatic experiences that have really wounded or have that heavy um, kind of dark shadow around them. When we bring in playfulness, we bring in our inner child and let it play in there. We bring in color that feels playful to us. We bring in sounds like laughter in those places. Sometimes it begins with the practice of going back to a time that you knew you had trauma or to a relationship that even in your current experience is particularly traumatic or difficult and heavy for you. You visualize that and then you move into laughter there. Like I can see something that's funny in this situation. I can see myself and I look a little funny in this situation um, and just start laughing. Sometimes it feels funny at first, but then you move into it and then you start to laugh at the silliness of your laughter. Like it will sound funny to you or there will be something in there that genuinely catches you. And that moves that buoyancy of the energy of playfulness into that experience, into that trauma. And it will literally break it up like clogs of dirt being broken up with air. It will open up the experience and lighten that density that you feel in the darkness. Uh, the same can be true when there are um, literally spiritual things like demons or these dark kind of um, entities that you feel like if they, if you ever have experience with that, that you move into a sense of instead of fighting like this, you fight in an area of playfulness. So this would be, let me give you an example, like something comes at you and you're like, absolutely not. Even the intonation, hear how it comes up? Absolutely not, absolutely not. It doesn't even affect 
any area of you that feels like, no, 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 no. Uh, you, you feel how that moves into panic and then there's the anxiety energy that's sort of giving in and aligning with the fear at the same time trying to fight it off. No, 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 no. The way you would talk to a child that's done something troubling or like, you know, throwing a fit and you're absolutely not allowing it and it's absolutely ridiculous. This playful energy in those times can be very powerful. And I realize that sounds trite in our 3D realm, but believe me, it is not when it works into the higher vibrational realms. This is a very intelligent use of power, of playfulness. So anyways, I went on with that one. I hope that you guys are blessed by this video and can take some tidbits from the conversation uh, and use them and utilize them in your own life. I will be back here next week with another video. If you guys have a question, just send it into my website, themodernshaman.net, and we'll talk about it on here together. Blessings.